Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us for our daily video. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most infamous boot makers in the world, mainly in North America, obviously, and the brand is, as you can tell, Luke Casey. So come join us and check out what we have for you today. Now, last week we talked about uh, one of the most well-known dress shoe brands out there, but we definitely have to switch it over to the most infamous brand, Lou Casey. Made in North America originally, obviously there are some other things out there that we'll get into about where else they are made as well, but we're going to start out by talking about Lou Casey in general. I have to have my little notepad in front of me because there's a lot of info. Lou Casey has a lot more on their website if you really want to get into the history of the brand, but for those of you who just want at least the most important factors about it all. Lou Casey's been around for over 100 years. It's been around since 1883. Starred by a couple of brothers who moved out here from Europe, uh, Salvatore and uh, Joseph Lou Casey. Uh, they started out in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and that's where the boot company basically started to grow. As they grew, they added more people, people who helped design boots and do fittings and all that kind of stuff. So it's been around for a very long time. This Boot company knows what they're doing. Uh, in general, Lou Casey is one of those brands since they've been around for so long, there are obviously fakes, and we'll get more into that later about being able to identify that. But we'll start out with talking about how they're constructed at first. Now, Lou Casey is one of those brands that obviously, because they've been around for a long time, they have a number of different builds and designs and styles, different leathers that they use, um, you know, but they're all very great, well-built boots. In general, you're going to find most of them like this pair here that uh, it's a pair of Lou Casey 2000s that we made into a sample piece, as you can tell. But typically, they all have a Goodyear welting, meaning that they have this piece right here that's stitched to the upper, the liner, and everything that's inside the boot, and then the sole is stitched to that welt there afterwards. Um, as far as uh, the welt itself goes, on this particular model, on the Lou Casey 2000s, the welt comes to about right here, which is a half length welt. They have some that are three quarter length, which goes underneath the heel base, which typically you would find on things like the Lou Casey uh, 1883s, which this one's still a work in progress. I'm actually doing a video on it, so if you wanna stay tuned to check that out later on, it might take a couple of weeks uh, to post that but this one's got a full welt from what it looks like it does stop obviously underneath the heel base but that's uh, typical with Western boots that if you do have a pair that's stitched all the way to the back here it's going to stop right where that heel base is and usually they do that because there's what's called a heel ren rend whatever you want to pronounce it and everything apparently I pronounce it wrong every now and then um, and as you can tell obviously these are still work in progress so don't freak out but um, it's basically a plastic piece typically sometimes they may use a leather one that kind of one helps as a guide where that heel block needs to sit also known as heel base um, and it also helps with spurs too uh, especially if you have spurs to put on whether they're decorative or functional type obviously there's going to be a number of people that really hate spurs my wife grew up around horses and she hates spurs but uh but sometimes they're decorative and that heel ren is there to really hold that spur on there nicely um any other kind of like uh you know saddle strapping that's decorative as well sometimes it needs somewhere to sit on and having that heel ren there is very very important. Also, it helps with the recraftability aspect of it so that when they are recrafted, everything can be pulled apart nicely and you still have a nice functional guide to work off of instead of having to guess, well, let's see where that heel block roughly sat and you know how long this heel, this, uh, heel needs to stick out and everything. Obviously, when we do recrafting, we sometimes have to remove that and reposition it. Sometimes we have to do a customization for somebody that needs it to stick out more, someone a little bit less. So there's different alternatives and options to be able to mess around with that too. Now, about the recraftability part, Lou Casey does offer their own recraft service as well, so if you want to do it through them, by all means. Uh, they're great people to work with. They're very good at what they do. They are a little stubborn though, however, if you had your boots recrafted or worked on it any form of way, even something as small as adding heels, they won't touch them. So that is kind of 
a downside, I guess you can say. But we do have a number of people, as you can tell, we've got these, some of them are already worked on, some of them are in the middle of being worked on like these ones, and some of them have yet to even be started. So there are a number of people out there that would rather have a cobbler work on it because you have a little bit more options and opportunities to be able to change things around where Luke Casey's gonna kind of give you maybe a couple of options to go with and that's it. So if you wanna get creative in any form or way, there's not much, uh, there's not much to work with there. Now, as I mentioned, a little bit of the background of the company starting 1883 in San Antonio. Um, since then, they have moved their production. They are mainly located in El Paso, Texas now. Um, now, where we get into it is not all of the boots are made in El Paso, Texas. Some of them are made in Mexico, and you may see that. All the ones I have up here are made in the U.S., so that means they're coming out of El Paso, Texas. I could not find a single one in my shop that was made in Mexico at the moment, which was kind of surprising, but at the same time, not surprising because majority of their footwear is made in El Paso. So if you get a pair of boots that are made in Mexico by Luke Casey, that doesn't mean that they're a lower quality build or anything like that. It, it just means that they were made there. You know, the, the boot makers out in Mexico, they do phenomenal work. There are guys that are fourth and fifth generation boot makers in Mexico, all right? So don't get concerned thinking that, oh, because they're made in Mexico, not made in the US, they're a lower quality. Not at all, not at all. A lot of the leathers that we get here in the US, whether it's us cobblers for recrafting or other boot companies and manufacturers, most of our leather is outsourced from Mexico. Other countries as well, but majority of it is from Mexico. And they do phenomenal work. So don't get frustrated. Don't say, oh, they're just horrible boots if they're made in Mexico. They are not. They still are doing everything to the specs of Luke Casey. They follow their instructions, their guides. A lot of those guys, actually, almost all of them were trained by experts from Luke Casey. And even, you know, if they're multiple generation boot makers, Luke Casey still came in and showed them how they prefer to have their boots made. So these guys know what they're doing. They're doing it all correctly. And, you know, so don't get upset. Now, obviously, because boots are still handmade to a huge degree, in other words, boot making has to be done by hand majority of the time, especially if you have a nice leather sole on it or even one of the rubber versions. The way Luke Casey's are made, there is going to be handmade aspects to it, which entails also minor flaws. Minor flaws will occur by nature. Humans are not perfect. We are not perfect one bit. So there are gonna be minor flaws here and there. Again, don't get frustrated. Just like leather, leather is natural. It, we don't know what's gonna to happen to it. Once, we, once it's taken and tanned and everything like that and is made into a boot, a belt, whatever it may be, there may be a minor flaw or there should be minor flaws in leather. You're gonna see pores, you're gonna see, you know, maybe discoloration of some sort. Um, the only ones you really have to be concerned about is maybe weak points, but Luke Casey is very good about picking out which area of the hide to cut to use to its full potential and they're very good at that. But obviously, you know, the handmade aspect of it, some things may occur. Don't get frustrated. Luke Casey is very, very good at taking care of you afterwards when it comes to having to return it, exchange it, or do some kind of in-store credit or credit on their website, whatever it may be. So it's a normal thing. Expect that when you want quality. Quality entails handmade, and handmade entails that there is going to be some human error and flaw every now and, now and then. And that's a very common thing. I know, I'm second generation cobbler. I've worked with other cobblers. There are some that, have flaw after flaw after flaw but if a company has been around for as long as luke casey has they've learned how to fix those flaws and learned how to delegate that workflow if there's somebody constantly doing any kind of flaws but if there is something that occurs they'll take good care of you now fun fact try to guess by the end of this video now no cheating or anything in 1897 a pair of kangaroo boots what did they cost Try to guess, comment down below, but please, no cheating. Don't cheat, don't look at the comments, and uh, don't skip to the end of the video, but who can guess how much a pair of kangaroo skin boots from Luke Casey cost in 1897? So stay tuned till the end to find out how much that cost. All right, so as far as their sizing, now there's always one of those questions in any industry when it comes to footwear, whether it's boots or shoes or even flip-flops. Is the sizing true to size? 
Yes, they are true to size. Obviously, Luke Casey says they are true to size and everyone that owns a pair, they say it's true to size. But you gotta keep in mind that Luke Casey does have a number of different lasts and toe designs. Like right here, we've got a more of a squared box toe right here with a double stitch welt. Um, there are more pointed toes like this. There are snip toes. There are all sorts of different toe shapes. And as well, lasts play a big role. So maybe you might get a different type of last in a different model. And they usually tend to list that as well so that when you finally go to try on a pair in person, which I do recommend doing, trying on in person is usually better than just ordering online and going back and forth. Otherwise you're dealing with shipping costs and all that kind of stuff. So it gets annoying. But once you figure out which style fits you, first of all, start with what you like. Do you like the square toe look? Do you like the more pointed round toe? or a full rounded toe or a snip toe, what do you like? Lucasi has a list of all their toe styles and heel styles on their website, so definitely you can check that out. Um, but you really have to narrow down which ones fit you how. Because if you have a wide foot and you're trying to get a snip toe boot basically, and you're going for that true to size fit, you gotta remember you got a wider foot and maybe that style doesn't come in a different width. That's another thing. Luke Casey, in a number of their boots, does have a great variety of widths, not only sizes, too, and uh, sizes as well. They've got phenomenal sizes because there are some big dudes and there are some little ladies and all sorts of sizes in between, too. So great sizing options, but do experiment a little bit. Go to your local boot store that may sell Luke Casey and just kind of try them out, see how they fit, and remember to support your local boot store as well. Don't just always order them online as well. Lucchese also on top of that does have their made to order program where you can go ahead and order a pair of, to whatever specs you want and uh, you could also kind of fine tune certain fits and everything like that too which is an awesome thing just check that out also on their website if you want a pair made. Uh, they're made to order are made in Texas. Uh, those still take about six to eight weeks and I wouldn't be surprised that there are times where they might be a little bit backlogged and do have to take a little longer so don't get frustrated you're getting a pair of boots made to order that are expected to last you for decades with obviously recrafting in between there but um you know be a little patient sometimes it happens i know personally when our busy season kicks in i could get backed up quite a bit on just my recrafting you know and resoling and rehealing it so when you got a pair of boots that are being made specifically for you be patient and be very excited when they come in make sure you take plenty of pictures as well uh with that note also, I'd like to mention, we had started a group on Facebook called Luke Casey Enthusiast. Check that out. There are a lot of Luke Casey enthusiasts on there. There are very knowledgeable sales reps on there uh, from Luke Casey, sales reps from other stores too. So great group to check out as well. And um, you know, let your friends know and post your pictures on there. We'd love to see what you have, any opinions that you have as well about the brand. If you're new to it, you can find all the details, post questions, and everybody will be happy to help you with whatever you need on there. Now we're gonna get into the part that's frustrating, I guess you can say, fakes. Obviously because this brand is so well known and it's been around for a very long time, there are a number of fake ones out there. Not as much as a certain high-end brand, you know, fashion shoes, in other words. Western boots are not as popular worldwide as fashion shoes and boots are. Uh, it's typically more common that you see these styles of footwear, in other words, in Mexico, uh, parts of South America, the US and Canada. Going outside of the, you know, Americas basically, you know, Europe, Asia, they're not very popular. It's not high demand for it. So there isn't as much fakes out there, but there are still fakes regardless. So identifying fakes, there's a number of ways to be able to do that. First things first, obviously, if you're well educated or you know what true leather is supposed to be like, grab them, feel them. If you have them in person, just kind of feel around, um, you know, examine them. You got to remember that they are leather. So leather does have flaws. So look for those small imperfections that leather would naturally have. Pores, you know, sometimes will be kind of visible as well. You're going to see some of that. Uh, you're going to see some maybe blotchiness a little bit. And that's normal. Don't expect perfection. That's made by nature, okay? Leather is made by nature. So you're going to have imperfections and that's the beauty of it. That's just the beautiful aspect of it that every single pair, every hide is going to be a little bit different and it makes it feel a little more personal. The other thing that you can also identify by is the stitching. Stitching from the pull straps right here all over the place. Um, you know, 
obviously because they are handmade, there's going to be minor flaws here and there, but if you're going to be seeing flaw after flaw, the stitch density is way too different, meaning that one stitch is narrow, the next one is wide, and it's just too common, it's too frequent that you see that. Now, obviously, you'll probably find a few stitches that are kind of off a little here and there, and that happens, that's very normal, but if it's a significant amount, I mean, a lot of stitches are just kind of pulling apart, there's like overlap upon overlap, uh, probably about, I would say, 99 out of 100 times, that's a fake, you know, just because that's, or if you want to say 9 out of 10, whatever, but 99 out of 100, that's just seems a little, a little higher percentage, in other words. Um, but that usually entails that it's a fake as well. Uh, the other one is a stitching on the welt as well. Uh, one of the key giveaways right away with Luke Casey, all of their soles are stitched around the welt, clear through, so you'd end up seeing stitching on the bottom. That lines up perfectly with the stitching at the top of the welt here. Um, now, obviously not perfect, perfect. Sometimes it might be at a slight angle, which I know because there are some boots that you kind of have to stitch an angle that way. But regardless, the stitches can be visibly seen that they are actually stitched. So pay attention to that if you see a pair that has very narrow, very small stitches on that welt. Usually that's a fake fake stitch. It's just there for decoration and that just entails that it's fake automatically. If you see stitching on the top but none at the bottom as well, that's fake immediately right away too. Now, some of you might say, well, what about blind stitching? Western boots don't have blind stitching. For those of you who don't know, blind stitching is a whole nother story, but it's mostly about dress shoes and high-end men's dress shoes, some ladies as well. But Western boots are never blind stitched unless they were recrafted by a cobbler and that was done by request which we can do, I haven't done that yet. Usually anyone with Western boots, they don't really care. They don't care about the blind stitch aspect. Some of the very old antique boots, I'm talking about over a hundred year old boots, some of those do have blind stitching, but because of how old they are, usually that area is kind of worn down and you can already see the stitching, but those are old boots and we're talking about newer boots nowadays, you know, maybe 20, 30 years or newer. So that's one way that you can identify it as well. Um, the other thing Luke Casey tends to do is they use lemon pegs. What are lemon pegs? Lemon pegs are typically, like you can see on this pair, I've got the brass ones here, but from Luke Casey, they use the wooden pegs to hold everything together in this arch area. So if you have a boot that is uh, good, you're welted at halfway point, you usually have the nails right here. And uh, we as cobblers, we tend to use the nails mostly. We can do lemon pegs, but I'm not a big fan of them personally. You gotta remember that you gotta think about rotting or something that's that's a big issue but brand new pairs that or maybe ones that have barely been used as well they typically have the well they always have the lemon pig at least from the lucchese line so that's another giveaway too if you see ones that have never been recrafted or resold and they don't have the lemon pigs on there usually that's a fake as well so keep an eye out for that if you're buying a pair that's brand new or barely used so you know but if it's been recrafted it's a little bit harder to tell um now if you also come across a pair that has a zipper so if you have a pair of work boot types you know if original from the factory not customized obviously usually the zippers will use branded zippers the ones you want to look for is ykk which is the biggest we use them here at the shop they're the best zippers out there and the other one is rear reary r-i-r-i -R -I, basically so those are the two main ones that luke casey uses so if you have a pair that you're looking at that has a zipper on it check on the zipper pole just kind of turn it on the inside and just look what does it say there it usually says ykk and a number that's for sizing might say like 5c 5v something like that um the rear east ones are a little bit different but they still will have some kind of sizing on there too um now the other thing is that you can really that will really help you is the style Luke Casey lists all their styles on their website, so if you're trying to buy a particular style but you're not sure if that's a current one or anything like that, um, go on their website, type it in, look it up, you know, try to find it. If it's not listed on there, usually a fake. Obviously, with the older styles that are much older, they might not be listed on the website um, unless it was something about their history or anything like that, then you might be able to see that. But if it's a much older style, I'm sorry, but that might be kind of hard to identify. So just go back and check through the other uh, options as being able to identify a fake from a real pair. One thing I almost forgot to mention, and this is kind of a big one that for us cobblers we hear all the time, and this is on their construction of these. 
as well. We'll have to go back to the construction. I'm gonna have to take this pair that's worn out. This heel block right here on the Lucases, they're not wooden, which is actually a good thing. Wood heel blocks, they, they suck. They, they fall apart really badly. They're not great. They're just forget about it. They're not wooden, okay? Drop it, leave it, okay? But they are typically a fiberboard material. Basically it's pressed boards, you know, like different particles of wood, uh, paper and all sorts of stuff, which kind of sounds like it sucks, but yes, it kind of sucks. But it's still actually one of the most densest fiber boards I come across. And I work on a number of boots and shoes out there and almost all of them have the fiber board in there. And some companies have them better than others. And Luke Casey definitely is one of the better ones. It helps cut down on cost. Otherwise they definitely have to bump up the price significantly on Luke Casey's in general. And also it takes down the weight a little bit too, because that fiber board is a little bit lighter weight and it's also easier to work with. Now there are some other models that do have the leather stacked, which are great. Uh, leather stacked is preferred, but does bump up price again and a little bit on the weight too so if it, if weight is a little bit of an issue because you gotta, gotta consider that's a fairly thick heel and this is a luke kc 2000 yep that's the 2000 here and uh that's that's a short heel on that some of them have a much higher heel too so if you have that high heel it's gonna bump up that weight significantly one other thing i nearly forgot to mention all of these on the inside are leather lined. There are just a number of variants of leather liners that they tend to use on those Luke Casey. Some of them are just straight like that and don't really have a liner, I've, uh, but I've only seen maybe like a few. And, and I think they were like certain like made to orders almost basically. But just about every other pair, yep, lined, 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 every single one of them are lined. Like I've only seen quite literally two and that was years ago. And I think they were either made to order that way or they were fakes, but it was so long ago that I can't actually go back and tell you for sure whether they were real or fake. Memory's not as good as they used to be, unfortunately. So again, sorry I had to go back on you guys about the build there. Um, now, the other thing is Luke Casey has been coming out with all sorts of new styles like this one here with the double stitch and everything. Some of you I know are, you know, avid boot lovers, cowboys, cowgirls, you know, old school saying, oh, those aren't, those aren't real cowboy boots. I got a pair. Okay. I like the double stitch. I got a little bit of a wider toe area. I like the squirt toe. So leave us alone, please. We like that double stitch. I don't really care much for the double stitch. I just like the square toe fits my foot a little bit better. So leave us alone. All you real cowboys and cowgirls out there. I got Marcus laughing at me back there. <laughs> But anyways, um, now for that question I asked earlier, how much did a pair of Luke Casey kangaroo skin boots cost in 1897? You ready? Did you guess? Let's see how close you got. It was $9, $9. Over a hundred years ago, a pair of kangaroo skin Luke Casey boots were nine bucks. That's awesome. <laughs> well, awesome if you were back then, but at the same time, you gotta think about inflation, all that financial jargon stuff but you know that's pretty interesting right Luke Casey has a lot of uh, additional history if you're really wanting to find out more details you could go to their website they have an entire list just going back to the very beginning before Luke Casey was even started talking about the two brothers how they moved out here to the US from Europe and how things started flowing and going um, they tracked throughout history like certain boots that they sold for the price and you can just see certain prices going up 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 and throughout history obviously prices go up on everything we should all know that, that by now so it's just kind of interesting fun facts if you're somebody that likes history definitely check out Luke Casey's they have been very good about tracking that throughout the over 130 well what is it, 130 years roughly and they've kept good track of it obviously some things may have been lost through history but still very cool fun facts to be able to see and look through if you have any other questions for us give us a call swing on by comment down below you know send us a message whatever works all of our contact information is on our website cobblersplus.com you could also check out luke casey enthusiasts on facebook or go to luke casey's website and see what they've got on there or also check out your local boot store and talk to some of the people that have been working with those boots for many years and can compare them as well side by side from the retail perspective or other cobblers locally that have worked with Luke Casey and other boot brands and can give you the breakdown of what their expectation and what they see in that boot. For us, Luke Casey is definitely our favorite brand out there hands down when it comes to Western boots. 
I love these. My favorite personally are the Lucchese 2000s. I've had them in a number of different exotic skins come through the shop, but I have no pairs of them, unfortunately. I have no 2000s, sadly. Someday I'll try to find myself a pair that's used and I can recraft and do some cool stuff with it. My second favorite is the 1883s. And obviously I like my square toes. Leave me alone about it. And leave everyone else alone about it who has a pair of square toes. They're cool. You can't deny it. They're not a boot. They're definitely not a boot when it comes to killing those roaches. That's what those snip toes are for. You guys wear the snip toes. You know what I'm talking about. They're the roach killers. Thank you for joining us in our daily video talking about Luke Casey brand. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we have our next video out. We've been posting every day, Monday through Friday for our daily post, recraft videos on Saturdays, and we finally got back into our Soul Talk Sundays on Sunday. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.